Yeah, come. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, come. ma'am. Good come. afternoon, sirs. Please sit down. Thank you, sir. Just for your information, it is not good afternoon yet. Huh? It turns good afternoon after 12 noon. Sorry, sir. Okay. <laughs> no, just, just for information. Achha, Mr. Uh, Gupta. Yes, sir. Now, you have done mining engineering kiya in 2016. Yes, sir. And then you've been working in this. Uh, is this some kind of a. Uh, what is this? Rao Educational Solutions? What is this? Uh, sir, this is uh, private coaching for IIT, JE, and NEET. For IIT? Uh, JE as okay, well as NEET. Okay. Achha. And uh, where in Delhi? Uh, yes, sir. In so Delhi. So you have been teaching chemistry in there? Yes, sir. And you've been getting a handsome salary also? Yes, sir. Now you worked there for four years? Yes. So what what made you decide to jump into the services? Sir, in uh, education sector, uh, I was uh, serving the certain sections of the students only. But in civil services particularly, I will get a chance to serve the wider section or larger section of the society. So that was my first motivation to join the civil. What point of time did you decide that civil services is the area in which you want to work? Sir, in first year of the uh, my job. Okay. So is this your first attempt? Uh, no, sir. This is my uh, fifth attempt. Your fifth attempt. Yes. And for interview? This is first. First attempt. Yes. Okay. Right. Rashid. Yes. Uh, you were generally keeping yourself updated with what's happening around you. How do you keep yourself updated on current affairs? Uh, from newspaper okay. first, and then I listen sometimes AIR. What is Ayushman Bharat? Sorry, sir. Ayushman Bharat. Ayushman Bharat uh, is to uh, give, provide uh, around 10 crore families health insurance and it uh, try to establish health and wellness center as well as try to provide secondary as well as tertiary care to the people. Uh, around 5 lakh insurance is there per annum per family. Mm -hmm. So this can ensure health for all. Or there some further developments have taken place in this scheme? Uh, sir, uh, Primary health center, some PHCs has been converted to uh, health and wellness center. So that is specific, but uh, the scheme itself, there is some further expansion indicated? Uh, sir, I am not exactly aware of this, okay, so I will read about it. And uh, what is an IPO? Sir, it is initial public offering. Uh -huh. And some of the company which are not listed on the BSE or NSE platform, they try, uh, list and uh, sh um, they give. Uh, shares to the people who can invest. What is the latest on this? A lot of news keeps coming about. Which is the organization about? Uh, sir, LI, it is about LIC. That LIC IPO is coming. Where are they? Uh, it's on 5th of May. Uh, 5th or 2nd, I'm not sure. Sir, I'll what think. is the order of uh, uh, divestment? Sir, it is around 25,000 crore. So, what in, the, in terms of percentage of the shares, how much is being divested? It is 3.5 percent. Okay, good. Now, what's happening in uh, this uh, Congress in Punjab? Some developments have taken place in Punjab. Uh, for Congress? Yes. Uh, sorry, sir, I'm not aware about. The disciplinary committee on. Sir, I'll have to read about okay. it. And uh, what is it that people are afraid of in terms of this Twitter being taken over by mass? What is the argument against it? Sir, number one is uh, he might uh, uh, try to uh, bring out or try to project uh, his own own uh, propaganda in on the Twitter. Uh, previously, he was known for this uh, invest about uh, creating a bubble of this cryptocurrency that you should invest in cryptocurrency and then people lose money because he one day he invests and other day he just uh, took off that money. So that is the uh, first thing. Then there are some. Uh, allegations or on him about he being misogynist type of person, so uh, it might create a hindrance to freedom of speech, uh, speech and expression. Hindrance? In fact, he is called <laughs> absolutist for freedom of speech. He is he is treated as free speech absolutist. The other corner, actually. Freedom of speech and expression should not be. Uh, uh, I think there should be some restri reasonable restrictions on the freedom of speech and expressions. So. That's why. Why do you think so? 
बिकॉज सर सम ऑफ द स्पीचेस सच एज हेड स्पीच कैन कोज डिस हारमोनी इन द सोसाइटी दे माइट इम्पैक्ट द सिक्योरिटी एज वेल एज सोवरेनिटी ऑफ द कंट्री वॉट इज द लेटेस्ट दैट सुप्रीम कोर्ट है सेट इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ द हेड स्पीच इन वॉट कॉन्टेक्स है सर आई एम नॉट एग्जैक्टली श्योर अबाउट द रेफरेंस but it has said something that uh, there should be uh, restrictions on the uh, head speeches it is in and a context it is in a context anyway yes that yes, uh, you are giving permission to as your optional yes ma'am uh, has any uh, one won the nobel prize for chemistry twice yes uh, chemistry twice and not ma'am no ma'am i am not aware of this fact any indian or indian origin person has won the nobel prize in chemistry uh, ma'am sorry ma'am i'll have to read about it v ramakrishnan no okay no cooking what do you mean by cooking you cook uh, yes ma'am what cuisine rajasthan or rajasthani or uh, ma'am specifically rajasthani and apart from this i cook some of the dishes such as uh, paneer tikka Okay. Indian, 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 basically. Okay. Now you have given foreign service as your option. Yes. In your idea, what what do you think an Indian embassy does abroad? Do you have any idea what is the role of an Indian embassy or mission abroad? Uh, what does it do? Number one would be uh, diplomacy to put our point forward uh, in the foreign arena or foreign domain. Number two will be. whenever some dignitaries from india visit so they take care of their visit and they plan their visit accordingly number 3 uh, they take care of the people or the our migrants who are there so whenever they face any challenge then embassy helps just like it did in ukraine so these are basic functions of the there's more to it no than just these things looking after vips and looking after migrants there's more to it uh, it you is just read about it yes, okay definitely now uh, You've heard of the South China Sea? Yes, ma'am. What are the disputes there? Why is the China South China Sea so important? And does India have some role there? Uh, ma'am, South China Sea. Uh, number one is the it is on the important sea line of communication that major trade uh, pass through it, South China Sea particularly, and uh, China is trying to uh, is going beyond its exclusive economic zone. and it is claiming that south china sea is its own and it is trying to encircle the south china sea there are uh, disputes such as senkaku island dispute is there so these are some of the disputes and india particularly has interest in the minerals of the south china uh, india indian ocean as well as uh, india has uh, india's vision of free and open indo pacific as well as rule based world order is quite in compliance with the uh, our idea of south china sea being free from any country's interference so these It's are the key element of the east uh, policy of ours no act east <coughs> yes okay now uh, have you heard the term smiling buddha uh, yes ma'am what is it so ma'am it is a buddha's uh, uh, statue that is located smiling buddha smiling buddha ma'am uh, i'm not exactly aware but can And i make Shakti. a guess it was a bomb yes, this was not a bomb <laughs> it's india's nuclear policy related to india's nuclear policy what was uh, smiling buddha okay doesn't matter now tell me what are the main features of india's nuclear policy uh, ma'am number one is uh, that we support universal nuclear disarmament uh, we support no first use policy as well as we support verifiable as well as time bound nuclear disarmament so these are our three stands that we take and uh, where do you have any idea of a nuclear power plant where they are uh, civilian nuclear power plant yes. uh, maharashtra in maharashtra it is there kudankulam nuclear power plant is there in uh, gujarat it is there in up tamil nadu yes ma'am kudankulam nuclear power plant is tamil nadu Now there is a crisis going on in uh, Sri Lanka. Yes. Tell me something about the economic crisis. Uh, reasons, ma'am. Yes. Uh, ma'am, number one is the uh, sudden or overnight shifting to organic farming, 
and number two would be the uh, half it has done uh, the tech interest rate or the tax rate has been done from populous measures that some previously tax rate was 15 percent and it was cut to 8 percent. Then three third reason would be tourism sector due to this COVID as well as Esther bombing attack. So this has uh, reduced uh, their economic potential. So this has caused the economic crisis in Sri Lanka. What about their debt? Export of the foreign exchange reserves. Uh, yes, ma'am. Foreign exchange inflation, rising inflation. Uh, these has been uh, problems of Sri Lanka. And what are they doing about it? What are the recent uh, measures? Uh, they are trying to get a bailout from IMF as well as we are also supporting them. How? Uh, we are supporting them financially. Uh, we are prom uh, we have promised some soft loans around 2.5 billion dollar in currency swap agreements are there. So that's how we are trying to support their economy. Okay, thank you. Will you explain me the hydrogen model founded by Niels Bohr, the uh, British scientist? By Niels Bohr. Uh, so, sir, he told about that uh, number one that electrons revolve around the nucleus uh, in elliptical path. Number two, hit all that uh, whenever electrons revolve around the nuclear uh, nucleus, they neither lose they, nor they gain energy. They revolve in the stationary path, and whenever they jump from one orbit to other orbit, then they lose or gain energy. If the electron uh, revolving in a, a lower orbit and it goes to higher orbit, then it will have to absorb the energy. And when it comes from upper orbit to lower orbit, then it will lose energy in the form of radiations. Correct. Okay. So how does it go to a upper orbit? Uh, by what gaining uh, energy, sir. How? What uh, can happen? Sir, uh, by when we supply light uh, to the, it depends on the uh, energy gap between the two orbits. So, for hydrogen. Correct. Okay. Okay, what is Cherenkov radiation? Sorry, sir. Cherenkov radiation. C H R K O V. Cherenkov radiation. Sorry, sir, I am not aware. I will read about it. But uh, have you not? Uh, Heard about this radiation coming out of the um, uh, reactor body uh, placed in a water or zero energy reactors, low energy reactors. So, have you seen Rocket Boys, Homi Baba? No, and, sir. Uh, no, sir. So, Sherinko radiation. Uh, uh, who all contributed to the making of first atomic bomb in the US. Who are those people of which nationality and how they reached the US? Uh, sorry sir, I am not aware. It, I remember the name of project. It was Manhattan Project, but uh, I cannot recall the name of the scientist. No, I am not asking the names individually. I am only asking the community or the nationality. Uh, sir, I will have to read about it. Who was the director? Sorry, sir, I am not aware of this. Okay, after US, which country made the atomic bomb? Uh, sir, I'm, can I make a guess? It was. Uh, okay. Uh, it was Russia. At the time, it was Soviet. Uh, yeah. And then, third? I can. You know. What happens actually in atomic bomb? Uh, sir, a nuclear fission reaction takes place in atomic bomb that we have made till now. Uh, so, in nuclear fission reaction, uh, the uranium particularly is used. Uh, uranium convert to some smaller element by emitting some radiation. Which isotope of uranium? Uh, uranium 235. Okay. So, this converts to thorium as well as some other. Breaks element. or converts? Uh, sir, converts, I would say. We should say breaks because half of its value, I mean, the, 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 in, again, uh, the the portions are half in number. It is an atomic number of what you get after breaking down. Actually, half of the original you got to buy. Anyway, it converts, let us go by conversion. Then what happens? And then some energy is released, and that energy is uh, that energy is uh, nothing in form of explosion uh, it is used. No, but how does this energy become uh, uh, Self-sustaining and uh, uh, due to some chain reactions take place. What is that chain reaction? 
sir uh, for uranium uh, 235 uh, one uh, for re for one uh, molecule or one atom uh, one uh, neutron is emitted and that neutron again react with the another uh, uranium and then it emits an uh, again another uranium uh, neutron so this reactions goes on and this is called chain reaction so it is uncontrolled chain reaction but if it is only one uh, neutron how will it remain uh, uncontrolled uh, sir in uh, atomic are... bomb it is uncontrolled in civil nuclear power plant it so, is so are you sure that only one neutron is emitted in every breaking up of the uranium 235 sir uh, in nuclear bomb it is 3 It is three. Three neutrons are emitted in a three. Okay, even that is not any. Then then what happens? Then uh, it goes on uh, again and again. So this reaction takes place again and, and again. Control changes. Yes. And what are the uh, effects of this uh, when they uh, you know bombarded uh, some towns in Japan? What happened to the people who live there? Uh, sir number one would be the nuclear uh, radiations which are emitted during this reaction uh, nuclear fission reaction so they keep on going for a longer time because half life of uranium is uh, quite much so it uh, goes on uh, till years so this impact are uh, but what do they do to the human beings sir this impact their health uh, such as such as uh, nervous system is impacted due to this Uh, in some first of, of all it burns them physically if the power the heat is so much and uh, you know he said brighter than a thousand suns yes it burns them uh, uh, literally yes and then and then uh, it causes huge ramification or huge repercussion in the longer run such as uh, many diseases uh, take place in the people some and genetic mutations yes sir achi yes Uh, you belong to Savai Mathur. Yes, sir. Why Savai Savai Mathur is so famous? Uh, sir, number one would be the Ranthambo Tiger Reserve, and number two would be the Ranthambo National Fort, which is which is UNESCO World Heritage Site. What is this project, Tiger? Sir, it was started in 1973 to conserve the tiger in their natural habitat, and till now we have around 51 tiger reserves, which are protecting the tiger, and it is in our vision of doubling the tiger population by 2022. Project Tiger also part of the it also is spread all over the country. Can you name other than Ranthambore? Sir, Sariska Tiger Reserve is there. Sariska Tiger. Ramgarh Vistari is there. Okay. Mukundra Tiger Reserve. You have passed out from ISN Nambar. Yes, sir. Which is in Nambar? In Jharkhand, sir. Jharkhand. Jharkhand. Me, how many minerals are there? Can you name few? Uh, sir, number one would be the coal. Uh, number two would be iron. Is there? Manganese is there, copper is there. So these are few minerals which are uh, known. Aluminium is also extracted in some of the places. What about uranium? Uranium is extracted at Jadugudha mines. Jadugudha, where is Jadugudha located? It's in Jhar. It's in Jharkhand. Uranium is also there, very rare. Have you been to any coal mining in India? Coal uh, mines? Yes, sir. Is it open cast mines or deep mines? Sir, it was a deep mine as well as I have been to open cast also. Open cast mine in Jharkhand. It is open cast mine or deep mines. In Jharkhand, I have been to uh, uh, underground mine, and I have uh, in Chhattisgarh, I have been to the open cast mine. Open cast mine. Uh, there is a continuous fire in Thambad area, particularly in Thambad area where your college was located. Yes. I have seen Thambad. The large uh, uh, area is under fire. Yes. Below the ground level. Yes. What is the reason for that? Uh, sir, in, uh, the fire is taking place since 1916 uh, in Jharia coal field, and reason as such number one or the reason which is given by the scientists is that when the coal is exposed to the radiations, then there are certain minerals in the coal uh, which are heated much more, and due to this spontaneous combustion start. So this is spontaneous combustion is taking place in Jharia coal field, and this is causing fire there for over hundred of years. Did you have any project like that to study and report, make a report? So, uh, I personally. No, oh, your college, ISM Dhanbad. Sir, I am not aware of this. Thank you, sir. Mr. Rajesh. Yes, sir. 
you know, uh, some time back, it was reported in the newspapers about the Armed Forces Special Powers Act, AFSPA. Yes. What was that? Uh, what what was reported in the media about the AFSPA? Uh, recent development, yeah. uh, sir. It was about the AFSPA being removed from certain uh, districts of the Manipur as well as Nagaland. Manipur and Nagaland, only two states. Uh, sir, Assam was also there. Yeah. So these three states. Three states, right? Now, uh, the Home Minister had made a statement saying that we have been able to do that because of the peaceful situation and many accords, agreements which have been signed by the government with the insurgent groups. Can you tell me something about the accords which were signed in the state of Assam in the last two years? Uh, sir, in Bodo land, yes. uh, that was accord that Bodo territorial area has been renamed as Bodo, Bodo Territorial District Council. So, more representation would be there for the people. So, what was the uh, Bodo's agitating for? What was their demand? Uh, Bodo, uh, they, are, they want more autonomy to their area. Only autonomy? That is not a major issue. Uh, sir, I will have to read more so about it. Basically, they wanted a statehood. That is the, uh, and that uh, uh, demand they have given up after the Bodo Accord. What else? Any other accord you can think of in Assam? Sir, recently Assam has signed a land boundary dispute. Yeah, that's different. Uh, and I cannot recall, sir. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, Nagaland also there has been insurgency. Can you tell me something about the movement there? Which group is involved? Uh, it is, sir, NSCN, National Socialist Council of Nagaland, Isak mm. Muba, and mm. it is demanding that Nagaland that some of the areas of Manipur and Nagaland as well as uh, Myanmar should be uh, merged and given, uh, made Greater Nagaland. You mentioned uh, Greater Nagaland, you mentioned two uh, two areas. You mentioned Manipur and? Manipur, Nagaland as well as some part of Myanmar. No, Myanmar, so it's not in our hand. Within the country, which are the, dist uh, which are the states from which they want uh, area to be included in Greater Nagaland? Sir, so these two I am aware. Uh, you have only mentioned one. Nagaland as well as Manipur. Nagaland is already there. Yes. Yes. You will see it. What is Greater Nagaland? You will understand it a little bit. Yes. Okay? Please read it. These are all uh, issues on which it are being reported regularly. Okay? Yes. Achha, now, uh, the Supreme Court has given certain directions regarding the appointment of a state DGP. Are you aware of that? Uh, yes, sir. Bataye. Sir, it was given Prakash Singh case that Haan. DGP should be uh, appointed in such a way that it is he is given or he or she is given a tenure of two years, and there should not be political interference in his or her work. Uh, That's true, but uh, anything. What is substance? How does the state decide? Who prepares the panel? Uh, sir, I'll have to read about. आप जहाँ जा रहे हैं अपने इंटरव्यू के लिए Hmm? UPSC has to submit a panel. Kudra says, you should have complete knowledge. Yes. Now, recently, Parliament has passed an act hein, called the Criminal Procedure Identification Act. Usme, there has been some opposition to it by human rights activists and others. Now, what was the reason for their opposition? Uh, sir, it was regarding Article 20, that right to self-incrimination, a person should not give his or uh, should not uh, declare himself or herself as a criminal, like self-incrimination is there. So, uh, there was a provision that uh, some retina scan would be there, they can be taken and it can be stored for 75 years. So, we don't have data protection law in India and due to this, there would be violation of privacy of the, those persons as well as there was some provisions regarding preventive detention. So, this might be... Preventive protect. detention under this act? Uh, no, sir. On there was some provision that uh, it might be a uh, use for the preventive detention indirectly. So, uh, we end your mock interview. Yes, I will give you a feedback. Yes, thank you. Sir. The first thing I will advise you is that uh, you go through the CD which you will be given for this interview. Yes. And you see the areas in which you did not have complete information. Yes. And the first advice would be that you brush up on that so that you are completely familiar with those large number of questions which are asked today. Okay? Yes. Generally speaking, 
in the interview questions will come from your DAF and from uh, current affairs. Now DAF mein aap se, aapka optional subject was chemistry. So we can ask chemistry ke bare mein bhi pooch sakte hai, aap se gaya. and chemistry related. Yes. You know like you are asked kisko Nobel Prize bila in chemistry. You know, these are questions which emanate from chemistry. So these are areas in which you should be able to brush up. Now yes, you sure. have mining engineering, ki hai, tawam mining disasters, hote hai, coal ke baare mein aap se pucha gaya. Kaun si government ki agency hai jo, uh, which responds to disaster management hai ki what is the constitution of that? What is the role of that uh, agency? Yes. These are all questions which can come from your mining engineering, which is there, right? Yes. You have given two extra uh, your extracurricular activities, teaching and cooking. Yes. Cooking may have certain questions. Cooking may Michelin stars hote hain. Hote hain? Michelin stars ke mein suna hai cooking may. No. Cooking may jo. Uh, World class, world level, pe jo, uh, those, uh, the cooks the, uh, who make certain dishes uh, on a restaurant which comes up to a particular level, they are given a star which is called a Michelin star. So, this is what we have to do. Teaching, mein, to of course, you are teaching chemistry only, isn't it? So, this is what we You see, current affairs, mein, you must read a newspaper regularly. Yes. And you have time, you have 12th ko hai na? Yes, sir. interview. So, thoda sa usko achhi tarah se padhiye. You see, you have information, but you do not have complete information, yes. and that is why you are faltering. Aafspa, three states me se withdraw kiya tha. Reasoning di gayi thi. If you don't read the whole thing, you will not be able to respond. Thik hai, criminal uh, ye jo hai, criminal procedure identification act clearly us par diye gaye the. So, if you read newspaper, you read the whole thing and try to memorize it. Yes. Thik hai. Yes. So. Current affairs, mein you can be asked any question. Yes. Within the country, kya ho raha hai? which are the various leaders uh, which are coming into the country. Prime Minister is supposed to go out. The other day, Prime Minister had gone to uh, the Union Territory of Jammu. Yes. yes. Pe kya, what are the areas in which he laid a foundation stone? There has been a reaction from Pakistan on the Heidel projects. Did you read about it in the papers or not? Uh, yes, sir. It was about Indus Water Treaty. Yeah, that's right. Good. So, you see, have to, you have to read everything yes. in a newspaper. And I would suggest, ke, uh, are you teaching abhi bhi ke are you uh, now on leave? Now, leave, sir. So, you have to read it for 12 hours, you have to read it for 8 hours. And yes. current affairs, pe you must have very good knowledge. Yes. Even on the day of your interview, read the newspaper very, very carefully. Yes, sir. And uh, that is the only way you will be able to impress the interview board. Yes. One more, just small minor thing. Do not look left and right when you are answering your questions. You will maintain eye contact only with the member of the board who is asking you the question. Sir, 100%. 100%. 100%. You see, aap, you are teaching. Yes. Aap jab teaching mein khade hote hai, to you are supposed to look to all the students. Yes. Isn't it? But ye wo to hai nahi, ye to, this is a formal interview. Yes. And it looks very awkward when one member is asking you a question. Aap ja, udhar de ke de it, it doesn't, uh, it's a logical thing. But kuch training, uh, teaching institutes, hai, coaching institutes, wo batate hai ki aap sab taraf dekhe. That is not the case. Yes. This is a very formal interview. Usme you will only maintain eye contact. Yes. Thik hai? Sure. You belong to Rajasthan. Rajasthan ke baare mein thoda information jo hai, you must gather. Yes. Particularly tourism area hai, which is a very major thing for Rajasthan. What are the measures taken by the state government to improve uh, tourism in the, uh, in the state? You opted for IAS and IPS and foreign service. Supposing you uh, IPS or IAS pe posted hai in your district, what do you feel are the critical issues which need to be addressed? Thoda sa give some thought to that. Thik? Yes. Chalye. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank All you, the man. best. All the best. Chalye. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.